Hey guys, so this isn't gonna be just another sunscreen video telling you guys about how sunscreen is going to save your life because I'm sure we've all heard so many times repeatedly and just kind of gets boring, right? But the fact is most people I feel like are still a little confused about how sunscreen works, what SPF means, how often we should apply or reapply, and at what stage we use it if we're using makeup. And most people think that the foundation they use or the mineral powder or whatever makeup it is that contains sunscreen or SPF is enough to provide you that protection against the sun. But let me tell you guys, it is not. Because in order to get the actual sun protection labeled on the SPF of the product you're using, you actually need a very specific amount, which we will tell you how it comes across and what that amount is later in the video. And I'm gonna show you something that's actually just going to blow your little minds because when I found out about this, I was just like, <laughs> Um, but before we do that, make sure you have clicked that subscribe button, press all notifications, make sure that you're watching every single video, and let's just get into the video. So let's start off by just quickly recapping over what UVA and UVB is. So UVB are these short high energy wavelengths that actually hit upon the most surface layer of your skin, which is also known as the dermis. And when your dermis is irritated, this is actually what causes the redness and the swelling of what appears to be a sunburn. So this is what causes freckling and age spots or any kind of like skin pigmentation. So UVA penetrates more deeply into the skin than UVB rays and it actually affects the DNA of the cells of the dermis. So when this is attacked, I guess you can say, this is what causes wrinkling of the skin, but also makes your skin look like leather and it's saggy. So anyway, UVA has more long-term damaging effects. Now let's go over chemical and physical sunscreens. So what's the difference between chemical and physical sunscreen? So simply put, chemical sunscreens are those that contain chemicals, <laughs> like octacrylon, avobenzone, and octanoc. So these are just a couple of examples. And physical sunscreens use natural agents like zinc and titanium oxide. So with chemical sunscreens, they work by actually absorbing the UV rays as it enters the skin, which is then changed into heat and is released from the skin as infrared rays. Chemical sunscreens are generally more lightweight and blendable, which means these can be reapplied throughout the day really easily, which will most likely layer more seamlessly under makeup for like like daily wear. But once again, it can tend to be a little bit more irritating on the skin if you're sensitive. So moving on to physical sunscreens, the reason for the white cast is because of the ingredient called zinc oxide or even titanium dioxide. And these are the active minerals that sit on top of the skin to reflect incoming UV rays. So the good thing about physical sunscreens is that it works immediately after being applied and it's better for sensitive skin, but it does tend to be a little heavier and more visible on the skin, which means it's not as great for layering with your makeup, but it is good if you're pretty fair skinned. And it's also good for like outdoor activities, like if you're going to the beach. So moving on, skin type and the time it takes to burn. Let's just address this controversial question, I guess, because some people say it's really healthy to have 20 minutes of exposed sun without any sort of protection, you'll be fine. But anything longer than 20 minutes, you, that's when you should start applying sunscreen. But then others say that there's actually actually no safe amount of time that you can spend in the sun because any type of UV kind of penetration onto the skin is not healthy. So what is it? So to answer this question, it involves two key things, your skin tone or your skin type and the UV index. You can find the UV index when you search up, you know, the weather for the day. Sometimes different websites will tell you the UV as an indication, and this will range from like zero to two, which is really low, all the way up to 10 or 11 plus. And that's like basically a hot dog on a barbecue. <laughs> and this level of UV tends to happen between 10 and 4 p.m. So there's a thing called a shadow test. And if you're standing outside, if the shadow is really long, then that means the UV is generally lower. So it's like earlier on in the day or it's later on in the day because the shadow kind of casts longer, right? But the shorter the shadow is and like if you can't even see it, that means the sun is directly overhead and that means the UV is probably likely to be higher. Okay, Mia, so tell us about skin tones. 
There's actually a Fitzpatrick scale on what type of skin type that will handle what type of UV rays. So if you have fair skin, it's about five to 10 minutes. If you have olive skin, it's around 15 minutes. And if you have dark skin, you have about 20 minutes. So you can kind of see the more pigment in your skin, the longer you can go out without burning. So just so that you know your skin type, I still recommend you putting on sunscreen anyway because you just can't be sure. So what the heck is SPF? So it stands for sun protection factor and you'll see that it ranges from like two to four to seven all the way up to like 50, 80 and even a hundred. Is the bigger the number always better? Is it gonna be your more protected? According to our research, there is actually very little difference between an SPF 30, which is the one that you commonly see and an SPF 50, which you also see in a lot of makeup as well. And how it works is like this. Okay, so SPF 50 filters about 98% of UVB. So if you apply SPF 20, it will allow 1 20th of the UVB rays through, which is about 5%. So this is kind of saying with a perfect amount of application, it's not about actually being foolproof. It's about limiting the amount of UVA and UVB rays that are entering your skin. Okay, so to calculate the SPF factor, um, basically what you do is the minutes it takes before you burn and you times the SPF number and that equals to the maximum sun exposure. So for example, it takes me about 10 minutes before I start to burn. And if I use an SPF of 30, then that's 10 times 30, which is 300 minutes, which is, which is about approximately five hours. So that will last me five hours before my skin starts to burn. And that is also not factoring. It could be wind, water, or it could be washed off, wiped off. So depending on what climate situation, sometimes you do need to reapply a lot earlier, depending on your circumstance. So how much sunscreen do you actually need to apply? So if you look on any of the directions on a sunscreen, it will say, apply liberally. What the heck does liberally even mean? The general rule of thumb is that you wanna use a quarter teaspoon for your face. So a quarter teaspoon is about 1.23 grams. So just for visuals, this is a quarter teaspoon right here. So you should actually fill this up and this whole quarter teaspoon should spread over your entire face and also a little bit down your neck. And you wanna use like a shot glasses worth of sunscreen for your body. So now when it comes to sunscreen and makeup, and this, my friends, is actually where I'm going to blow your little mind. So I'm sure you've seen in your foundation, there's like SPF 20. And then you also get some powders that also have SPF, like this is SPF 15, this mineral powder, Powder is SPF 30. So all these makeup actually claim to have SPF in them, which they do. Okay, but this is what's going to actually blow your mind. A normal person uses about 1.5 pumps of foundation to cover their face, and that's already a lot. But let me just show you how many pumps of foundation you'll actually need to use if you want to get the recommended protection of what's actually on the bottle. So if this is SPF 20 with the foundation, how many pumps of this will I need on my face to get SPF 20 protection? Let me show you. Ready? Count with me, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven! pumps of foundation is what you're going to actually need to use in order to get SPF 20 protection. I'm going to take one for the team and just apply what this would look like on your skin. Goodbye, skin. Like if I were to go to the beach with foundation, if that's what you're into, this is what you need to look like. This is why you can't rely on just makeup in order to save you from the sun. It's like clogging my pores. It's clogging all the things that I did in my last life. It's sinking down into the core of my skin. <laughs> so you get the point, okay. So the same thing applies when you're using like a mineral powder that has 
SPF. So your face would be like a cake. <laughs> okay, so now you can walk out confidently knowing that you're shielded from the sun. I hope you guys get the point. I'm gonna pass it to Mia now while I wipe off my face and she's gonna tell you the order that you put sunscreen in if you are actually wearing makeup. So how I apply sunscreen is at the end of my skincare routine. So I've done cleanser, toner, serum, eye cream, moisturizer, and then I'll go ahead and put my sunscreen on after. I'll let that dry for about two to three minutes and then I'll go ahead and use my primer, which is my first step in my makeup routine. I'll let the primer dry and then I'll go ahead and use my foundation, which usually has an SPF about five to 30, depending on what foundation I'm using. I'll then let that sort of blend into the skin a little bit. And then I'll go ahead with my concealer and I'll powder it down and mattify everything. And my powders normally have an SPF of five to 30, depending on what powder I'm using. So you can always go back with more powder during the day to just touch up and also reapply some more SPF. That's basically what I normally do. And if you're not wearing any makeup, sunscreen should be the last thing that goes on your face. So while I take all this off my face. Let me just tell you some of my favorite sunscreens. I have three and if you have oily or combination skin, these will be really good for you as well. Sugar Goop, Drunk Elephant and Luminosity. So the Sugar Goop one I love because it's really gentle for sensitive skin and it doesn't clog the pores and it also feels like a primer. It's really lightweight and it kind of fills in the pores and it's invisible. So second is the Drunk Elephant Umbra Tint Physical Daily Defense and it's got an SPF of 30 and it's got zinc oxide which is something that you should always look for in a sunscreen and this one is slightly tinted it matches all skin tones because it's very sheer and so it will just kind of like camouflage into your skin whether you're fair or whether you're olive or whether you're dark this is one that's designed for acne skin and it's the Daily Habit SPF 30 sunscreen. If you are sensitive and if you do break out, you wanna look for something that's non-comedogenic, which just means it's been tested um, and it's more sensitive so that if you have inflamed skin or if it's red, it won't irritate it more. Basically, non-comedogenic just means it won't block your pores. So this is my favorite one and it says, broad spectrum sunscreen protects against UVA and UVB. And now that you know what UVA and UVB is, you can run along and get that if that's more up your alley. So some of my favorite sunscreen is the PC8 Weightless SPF, which is super lightweight, it goes on flawlessly and it doesn't make you look super white and it doesn't feel greasy at all and it hasn't broken me out, which is a great bonus. I also love the Ultraceuticals SPF 50. It comes in hydration, mattifying, as well as tinted. I just normally use the hydration for winter and then the mattifying for summer and they also have ones for body. And I also have been enjoying the Alpha H Moisturizer with SPF. I feel like that's like a moisturizer and SPF in one, so it feels quite nice and to put on top of a existing moisturizer, especially in winter and you feel really dry. There have been a lot of other sunscreens that you could use with a bit of tinted moisturizer in there, so those are my top three that I definitely recommend you guys trying them out. All right, that was it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we had answered most of your questions. If you have any more questions, leave your comments down below and we will see you in our next video. Bye!